thank you, Mitch. I want to thank each and every one of you that, that's here with us on tonight making this happen. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you again. Well, I bring you greetings from Apostle Carlos L. Malone Sr. and Elder Pamela Malone in their absence on tonight. Uh, I have a very interesting word um, that I want to share with you on tonight. Um, Apostle Malone, uh, over the last several several weeks, maybe a month or two now, he's been he's been really preaching and teaching on grace, you know, which is which is a very 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 um, good subject, and he's um, been really enlightening us as it pertains to grace. And, and so when I um, was looking at and seeking God as, as to what he would have me share with you on tonight um, pertaining to his grace, but not really talking about grace, but it pertains to God's grace. Um, and, and, and an interesting thing um, an interesting thing came to to mind, and because um, I believe that that when someone fall or or if someone fail, the body of Christ has to stop stop being so quick to replace people. Instead, repair them. I, I, that that that's that that just hit me in my spirit that the body of Christ have to stop being so quick, when someone fall, when someone make a mistake, the body of Christ have to, have to stop being so quick to replace people. Instead, repair them. And so um, I want you to go with me to, tonight to Romans. Go with me with, to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Uh, I'm going to read you verses 23 to 26. That's Romans chapter 3. And I'm going to read you verses 23 to 26. And I'm going to read that to you from the New Living translation of, of the Bible. And I want you to really pray, pay close attention to what, what these passages of Scripture is saying to us on tonight. And here we go, starting at verse 23 of Romans chapter 3. And it says this, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that God sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. His sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in, his present, in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus Christ. Let me run verses 23 and 24 by you one more time. Here we go. For everyone, it don't say some, it don't say a few. But the scripture says, for everyone has sinned and we all fall short of God's glorious standards. It don't say man's standards. It don't say my standards. It don't say your pastor's standards. It said God's glorious standard. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. And he did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. So I want to share with you tonight from the subject, failing don't make you a failure. Failing don't make you a failure. We all now, we all 
will fail at something at some point in time in our life. I want you to know that failure is inclusive and not exclusive. But I also, now, I also want you to know that anyone that say that they, have, that they have never failed is a person that have not tried to do much. So I encourage you that if you should fall or if you should fail, get back up now and try it again. Many, many, many biblical leaders in the Bible failed at some point in time, but they did not dwell on what they failed at instead. They chose to learn from their mistakes. So my brothers and my sisters, tonight I want you to know that you, are only, you only become a failure when you uh, quit and give up. Now, to fail now, to fail from time to time is only human, but, but, but to be a failure is when you allow failure to defeat you. Do not declare now, do not declare yourself as a failure just because you fail at something but declare that you will rise above your failure or your failures and try again. I want you to know, I want you to know tonight that being rooted in God and in his word does not immune you from failure. Yet, if you fail and fall, God has the power to take you from raggedy to righteous. You have not lost anything that God cannot replace through the power of of restoration. Let me say that to you again. Now, you have not lost anything that God cannot replace through his power to restore. God now, God know uh, you are going to fail. He know you and I are going to fail or, or fall short at some t uh, point in our life, yet he will stand by you and help you get back up on your feet. Now, I want, uh, I want you uh, to know this. Now, I want to be perfectly clear, and I, I want you to know that I do know and understand that it is not easy to accept failing at something. I'm not, I know I'm not the only one that, that has failed at something and, and, and felt like it was just over, that life was just over. Now, here's what I want you to know, people of God. The enemy now, the enemy want to annihilate and eliminate everything in your life but he can only work with the power that you give him over the things that God has given you. Are you listening to me? The enemy now, the enemy's ultimate goal is to discourage you through a failure and place you in bondage to it. If you are not careful now, if you are not careful, failing at something can lead to depression, anger, and the enemy will try to get you to believe that you are a failure because you fail. Ah, oh, but I'm here tonight to tell you that failing don't make you. A failure. The enemy now, the enemy, his plan is to destroy you and, and everything that is God-like that's in you. His ultimate goal is to steal, kill, and destroy you. You have been given now, you, 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 you people of God, you have been given the power over every plan of the enemy. Yet even in the midst of failure, God is there to help you work through whatever you have failed at. Remember this, my brothers and sisters, Satan may roam the earth, but God rule the earth. And know this, if you fear failure, you will never try. Let's look at Romans. Romans 5, Romans, Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 5 says this. It says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confidence, hope of salvation. And this hope would not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit. Now, he's given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. Oh, but I want you to know, I want you to know tonight, uh, my brothers and sisters, that just because you fail at something, it does not make you a failure. Your perception, your perception of your failure can do one or two things. It can put a wedge between you and God if you came in and believe the lies that you are not good enough. But here's the good news. It can draw you closer to him if you believe by faith what God says about you. Oh, your failure, your failure and, or your failures, if you allow them to, can ultimately bring you closer to God. People of God, 
Do not let the deficits in your life dictate your standing life. Do not allow them to keep you stuck in bondage to them. Instead now, instead, my brothers and sisters, let your failures propel you forward and use them as teachable moments. You have to be aware and know your life come with problems attached to it. No one would never uh, 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 live a problem-free life. Big or small, there would be problems or a problem at some point in time in your life. But you cannot allow yourself to be crippled in the midst of a crisis or a failure. I want to take a brief moment and give you three points. Three points. And they're not long points. I'll give you three points. The first point is this. Don't allow failure to become a personal stronghold. Don't allow failure to become a personal stronghold. I say this now, I, I say this to you because if you are a person that takes failing as something personal, it can keep you from moving forward. If you take failing personal, you would have the tendency to view an imperfect performance as confirmation that you are not good enough. Let me let me let me just say that to someone. I, I, I really I really believe someone needs to hear this 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 right here. So, uh, let me say it to you again. Now, if you take failing personal, you would have the tendency to view an imperfect performance as confirmation that you are not good enough. So here's what you can't do. Do not build anything in a failed situation. Instead, let how you handle it build your character. If you allow now, if you now, I'm talking about, I'm talking about you. If you allow a, a failing at something to become a personal issue in your life, it can become so tightly woven into the fabric of your life that your identity, that you are unable to separate the two. Hmm. Thank you, God. If you allow now, let me, let me, let me, somebody needs to hear this. Come on now, let's work with me. If you allow now, if you allow failing at something to become a personal issue in your life, it can become so tightly woven into the fabric of your life and your identity that you are unable to separate the two. If you allow failing to become a personal stronghold in your life, a loss of a job sounds like you don't have what it takes. A, bro a broken relationship will shake its finger at you, telling you you are not lovable. When you choose to see a failure through the eyes of self-doubt, you now limit yourself and you place your life in bondage to insecurity. Fear would then paralyze your movement and you would find yourself stuck. People of God, instead, instead now, instead seek God. Find out what he has to say about your situation and then trust him with it. If a door is for you to enter, it will remain open. If God closes the door, don't worry about it uh, 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 because believe by faith that he has an even better door or better one open that he is going to open for you on your behalf. Spend time with him, people of God, through prayer and allow him to direct your prayer, your path. I'm sorry. Here's something that I want you to know. Get this in your spirit. If you should hit rock bottom, it's not the end of your story, but it's the end of your struggle. Now your story can begin. If you should hit rock bottom, it is not the end of your story, but it is the end of your struggle. Now your story can begin. I want to encourage you tonight. Don't be in bondage to failure. But break away from it. The enemy wants to keep you in bondage to your failure so that, so that he can get you to believe that your king can keep his kids. The enemy wants to convince you through a failure that there is no power in what you believe, especially in what you see, don't look like what God promised. Point number two. Point number two. 
failure has a purpose. Oh, yeah, I know it's hard to believe, but yes, failure has a purpose. God now, God is not the author of failure, but he would use your failures to teach you practical principles that is designed to produce the promise that he has already preordained to manifest in your life. Now, I know I just said a mouthful, so I'm going to say it to you again. God is not the author of failure, but he would use your failures to teach you practical principles that is designed to produce the promise that he has already preordained to manifest in your life. God now, God would allow you to fail at something in your life in order to expose the Judases in your life. Here's why, because some people now, some people would rather catch you tripping than catch you before you fall. Uh, let me tell you that again. Uh, I'll just repeat myself a lot because I want to make sure you get this into your spirit. Because uh, failing now, if I know some people out there listening to me tonight think that you, your mistakes are too big, that you didn't fail, and, and there's just no hope for you. But I'm here to, I beg to differ. I'm here tonight to tell you that failing at something does not make you a failure. How you, how you get past a failure could depend on how you view it. If you see yourself as a failure, you would act like one, and now you have just placed yourself in bondage to what? You failed at. If you view, now, if you view it as a setback, now you position yourself for a comeback, and then you create an opportunity for God to turn it into a teachable moment. God now, God will manipulate and manage your failures so that, so that you get the revelation and learn the lessons from them. I want you to know that some of your failures are part of God's plan for your life. Uh, they were included in God's plan for your life long before you even failed. Failure can be a part of the pain of your process. Oh, but my question, my question now, my, my question to you is this. What do you do when God is behind the process of failure and the pain that come with it? What do you do? What, 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 what do you do? Well, the correct answer is this. Nothing. Here's what I suggest that you do. Stay in the process by getting back up and being determined to try it again. Oh, here's something for you. Here's something for you. God, now, God would use some strange strategies to strengthen your spiritual structure. Mm -hmm. Yes, he will. God would use some strange strategies to strengthen your spiritual structure. God would use failure as a tool to make you become more Christ-like. He would transform you through these experiences if you allow him to do so. He would also use your, 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 your failing as something to open up new opportunities for you to serve him through the testimony that will come from it. But he would also use it to get your attention and humble you by reminding you of your limitations. Not his limitations, but your limitations. Failure now, failure would also make you aware of how much you need God and it should lead you to depend on him even the more. Oh, but when you respond in faith, God will respond by his word. Now, do not allow a failure to cause you to lose confidence in God based upon fear. Here's why. There is no failure in God, so don't allow failure to get you get in you because, because you failed at something. Oh, but you have to learn, my brothers and sisters. You have, to, you have to learn never to surrender and never declare defeat because that will lead you to a premature exit. So you have to be willing to stay in the pursuit. Oh, failure now. Fail, faith now. Faith does not keep failure from you, but will get you through the process of it. Oh, yes. Faith now. Faith. Faith does not keep failure from you, but it would get you through the process of it. But you have to choose to learn from it while you are in it. Then when you come out of it, you will come out full and not empty. Oh, point number three. Our last point. Don't take advice from failure. Don't take advice from your failures. Here's something for you. Do not frame yourself 
as a failure, but manage your way through it until you have a clear picture to put into the frame of your life. Oh, let me say that to you again. Do not frame yourself as a failure, but manage your way through it until you have a clear picture to put into the frame of your life. Oh, don't listen now. Now, people of God, don't listen to everything that you hear after you have been exhausted by something that you failed at. Here's what you got to do. You got to take the time to think things through and take care of yourself physically and spiritually and emotionally. Then now, then get back in the game. Don't take advice from everyone about what you should have done. And here's why. Some people will celebrate your failures and envy your success. If you listen to a failed situation, you now have set yourself up to start thinking like a failure. And if you start thinking like a failure, you will eventually start acting like a failure. The only thing that can evolve from any of that is failure. Don't take advice from your failures. Instead, look beyond your present situation and look to a future solution to it. Acknowledge now, acknowledge the problem, but don't listen to it because it will try to talk you into giving up. But, oh, brothers and sisters, you have to lean on the power of your faith and not the problem that failing tried to present. Let failing as something be about your development and destiny and not about your destruction, no matter how devastating it may be. If you listen now, if you listen to failure, it will try to deprive you of getting to where you want to be. Just know this, that when you get back up by faith, God will delay some things until you get where he wants you to be. If you don't panic because you failed at something. God will move you above it so that you can see that it's now beneath you. Accept the fact that you are not perfect and embrace the fact that you are appointed to do great things. Then accept the call of God on your life as his perfect will for your life. So in closing tonight, in closing, In closing, people of God, I want you to know that failure is not fatal. Failure don't get the privilege of having the last word, so don't give it undue power. Failure does not have the power to disqualify you from God's plan for your life. I want to encourage you by telling you that God will never walk away from you because you fail. It is not in his nature, people of God. It's not in his nature to walk away. He is a God of redemption because his love, uh, 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 he loves being the principal player in a comeback story. If you, if you should happen to fail, fail forward. If you should fail at something, own it and learn from it. We see, we have a tendency now, we have a tendency to see our flaws and get discouraged. We, we see our shortcomings and take them as a disadvantage. God sees, God sees all of that, but he does not see you as that. He sees you as how he created you to be, and he sees you through his eyes of love towards you. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to know tonight that failing don't make you. A failure. You might now, you might see a fail, you might now, you, you might see a failed life, but God sees a life worth putting back together, a, a life that can be used to get him some glory. If God allow it, God allowed it to get some glory out of it. God loved now, God loved broken people, and he would never throw anyone away just because of they failed. His grace now, his grace is great, and he has the power to turn, turn things around in your favor. 
Now, there were several people. There were, there were several people in the Bible that failed, but God still used them in spite of, uh, of their failure. If you don't believe me, uh, let, me just, let me just call a few of them up right now since I'm here before you. Jacob lied and, and connived. Noah got drunk. Samson failed with Delilah. Gideon was fearful. Rahab was a prostitute. David had an affair and then had someone murdered to cover it up. Elijah was depressed and did not want to live. Jonah ran from God, the disciples. Disciples fell asleep when they should have been praying. Simon Peter openly denied the Lord. Moses killed an Egyptian. Elijah allowed Jezebel to intimidate him. And before he was Paul, he was Saul, a ruthless prosecutor of Jews, but he became the apostle Paul. The Samaritan woman was married five times, and, and the main thing, the grave failed to hold the Son of God, but God used it for three days. My brothers and my sisters, the only way for failure to get the last word is if you choose to let it. I want you to know tonight that you and I, we serve a God that is able to take your defeats and missteps and still use you to bring glory to his name. Live now. I want to encourage you tonight, live to be the best you, even when the best thing don't always happen to you. Know that you are not defined by your mistakes or problem. You are defined by how you handle it and not by how it handles you. So, I say to you tonight in closing, when you strive to do the right thing, you will come out on the right side of things. When you strive, people of God, to do the right thing, you will come out on the right side of things. So I want to say to you on tonight, failing don't make you a failure. And I believe that there's someone out there listening to, to us on tonight that, that was in that place of giving up. Because failure seems to be all around you. But I'm here tonight to tell you that you are not a failure. I'm here tonight to tell you this is not the time to give up. But it's the time for you to get up and get back in the game. Nobody, nobody is exempt from making a mistake. Nobody is exempt from failing at something. And just because you fail, that don't make you a failure. Get back up, my brother. Get back up, my sister. Shake it off. Get your second wind. And prepare for your second win. God will do it. If you just don't quit. And the only way. That you don't get to the end. Is if you never start. So tonight. Tell yourself. I'm not a failure. I'm a God's child. I'm a king's kid. And use that power that's on the inside of you. Elevate your faith. Because there's no way, there is no way that you can get through this pandemic season on little faith. Because Everybody's feeling this. If you're not feeling it, 
directly, you're feeling it indirectly. And some are feeling it directly and indirectly. But I encourage you, don't let go of your faith. Take God at his word. Hold on to it. When things get a little rough, remember what he said. Remember what he promised. And hold on to your faith. Hold on to his word till you see what he said. And God will get you through it. No. You're not a failure. It just didn't work. Get back in the game. Shake it off again, as I say. And don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. That's what the song says. So I pray. I pray that you was blessed by this word. I pray that you was encouraged by this word on tonight. And so, Father God, I thank you for this word, God. I I thank you for those that that are listening via Facebook and via YouTube on tonight. God, I pray that you bless them in a mighty way. And I pray, God, that for those individuals that may be a little bit down in their spirit, God, because of some failed situations or some closed doors, God, I pray, Lord God, that you lift their spirit on tonight, God. Strengthen their walk, God. Let them know, Father, that it's not over. Push them, God. Do something so supernatural that they know only you could do. And God, they'll give you some glory. They'll, they'll, they'll give you some glory and they'll tell your story, God. So do it, God. Do it, God. Strengthen them where they are weak, God. Let them know how strong you are. Be mighty, God. Be mighty in their life. Let them know, no matter what it looks like, allow them an opportunity, Father God, to see you be God. Allow them an opportunity to see you be only who you know how to be, and that's God. And I pray a blessing over each and every one tonight. I pray that God meet every need that you may have, big or small. If it's a healing, heal God. If it's financial, make a, make a financial breakthrough. If it's loneliness, God, fill that empty space, God. If it's hurt, God, heal that wound, God. Do it, God. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And God, we give you glory. Oh, yeah. We thank you for the good as well as the bad, God. We thank you. Because at the end, end you're still the same, God. And anything, God, that you decide not to do is not an indictment against your ability to do it. But it has everything to do with your will, and we're thanking you for it. And we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name.